Well, good evening or good morning and welcome to our Christmas broadcast from Church for Family. Uh, We're glad that you are with us today. Um, We're going to have a word of prayer in just a moment, but let me just share a couple of things with you. Um, As we move through the Christmas season and then head towards New Year's, I want to remind you that we will be meeting at our home on New Year's Day at 1030 for New Year's Day worship. And then we're going to have a brunch time together. We'll send an email out to most of you, uh, giving you some more information about that this week. And right after Christmas, we'll send that email out and let you know what's going on there. We also want to remind you to be faithful in your giving. You can give online at churchforfamily.com. Just click the giving link there, and you can give your regular tithes and offerings or your special end-of-the-year giving if you wish to give uh, through that as well. With that said, let's have a word of prayer. Ask God's blessing on our time together, and I am praying that you and your family have a wonderful Christmas season as you honor each other and then honor the birth of our, our Christ during this time. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can uh, gather online during this time. Lord, I know that with the busyness and the rush of the season, that it's good to just stop and slow down for a few minutes. Maybe take a breath and just remember the goodness of who you are. We thank you that you are our Prince of Peace. Lord, as, as we listen to these songs, as we sing along, may we be focused on worshiping you. Thank you for being the God, the gift of eternal life to us. In your name we pray, amen. Let's sing along together. Love incarnate, love divine Star and angels gave the sign Bow to babe on bended knee Savior of humanity, unto us a child is born, he shall reign forevermore. No. Suffer, born to save. Suffer, born to save. Born to raise us from the grave. Born to raise us from the grave. Christ, the everlasting Lord. Christ, the everlasting Lord. He shall reign forevermore. He shall reign forevermore. No.
Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. I heard the bells on Christmas Day The old familiar carols play And loud and sweet their songs repeat A peace on earth, good will to men And the bells are ringing Why they're singing In my heart I hear them Peace on earth Good will to men And in despair I bowed my head There is no peace on earth I said Great is strong and mocks the song A peace on earth, good will to men But the bells are ringing Dead, nor does he slay. Peace on earth, peace on earth. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail. With peace on earth, good will to men. And ringing, singing on its way. The world revived from night to A chime, a chant sublime A peace on earth, good will to men And the bells they ring
And he will be called Prince of Peace. The angels proclaimed in Luke chapter 2, Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. You know, we've probably sung those words dozens of times over the last weeks leading up to today, concluding Advent. We've probably read them on Christmas cards. We've seen them on banners. How many times have we heard or seen Others saying peace on earth or simply peace in the last few weeks. Um, Peace has become a selling point in many ways. Um, Buy this and and you will find peace. Um, It's festive. It's it's Christmassy to to say or to post words like peace or peace on earth. The final name or the final description in Isaiah's birth announcement for Isaiah A child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. Shalom. That's the Hebrew word there uh, for peace. Um, We know the word. It's actually used as a a personal greeting. Um, You know, shalom. But the word shalom has such a richer and fuller and deeper meaning than just peace. Um, It carries with it the concept of safety, welfare, health, rest, prosperity, and yes, obviously peace. Um, Shalom was the state in which God created the world before Adam and Eve sinned. That perfect sense of shalom. Shalom is is what God has promised throughout scripture will be in the new heaven and the new earth. So whenever somebody would say shalom, they had that in mind. I, I wish for you, I wish for you the peace, the state that God created us in originally. There's so much more to genuine peace than just peace, okay? Um, There's more to Christ's name than wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father. Jesus Christ is also our prince of peace. Now, to me, it's it's interesting that um, God puts those two words together as Isaiah makes this proclamation. Because um, you don't typically think of a ruler and peace, prince and peace, going together necessarily. But Isaiah says that Jesus Christ is literally the ruler of peace. For, for Isaiah, that, that must have been incomprehensible. Uh, it must, and for Ahaz, the king, it, it must have been um, impossible, too impossible to be true. Could it even be true? Because th- we know, as we've been talking these last few weeks, that uh, there was no peace in Judah. Judah was this poor nation surrounded by enemies, poised to take over and drag them into exile and slavery. The leader of Judah, (laughs) Ahaz, um, the citizens, they were terrified. But yet, this one that's being born is going to be called the ruler, the prince of peace. It was true 600 years later when Christ was born. Israel was a, was a conquered nation. Imperial Rome and soldiers occupied every town, every village. The world was living in what was known as the Pax Romana, literally the peace of Rome. But that peace was a forced peace. There, there were no wars because the enemy had already conquered everyone. 
Outsiders were all in control. There may have been peace, but it certainly wasn't peaceful. The absence of war is not necessarily peace. No war, no war, quotes, doesn't necessarily mean real safety. A forced peace is is never a genuine peace. But God speaks to the prophet and says, this peace will come. And then he speaks through the angels the night of Jesus' birth when he says there were angels singing and praising the night that Christ was born. And they said, peace on earth, peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. The coming Jesus was literally the coming of the true Prince of Peace. Jesus Christ, the, the ruler of peace, the Prince of Peace. Colossians 3.15 reminds us, and let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. Because Jesus is our wonderful counselor, he knows, and he knows how to guide us. Uh, Because he is our mighty God, his power is enough to accomplish whatever he promises to do in our lives in this world and what he promises to do for eternity. And because God is our everlasting father, he simply is. Jesus is not just someone from the past. Jesus Christ is God in the present and God in the future. And he promises never to leave us or forsake us. What he started with us, he will finish. God is our everlasting father, everlasting. But because Jesus is our wonderful counselor, our mighty God, our everlasting father, we have the ability to completely give ourselves over to his rule in our lives as the ruler of our peace. And as I alluded to a minute ago, um, this peace of Christ is radically different than the forced peace that we so often wish God would impose on our lives. We want God to make everything around us just right. We want God to change everyone that we come in contact with so that they will behave just like we want. We want all the circumstances, the environments, the people in our lives to be just so, and we want God to make it all happen. That's what we want. That's what we often mean when we say peace. God, do all of that. Force yourself into all of those situations so I can have peace. (laughs) The Christ of Christmas, though, offers us a radically different kind of peace. Instead of a peace forced upon us or forced upon others, Jesus Christ invites us, he asks us to surrender to, to submit to and accept his peace within us. Christ wants to literally favor us, grace us with his peace. But the only way to gain the peace of God that passes all understanding is to receive it, to openly and sincerely accept his peace. Christ Jesus offers his peace freely to anyone who's willing to accept it. He gives peace because he is the ruler of peace. Jesus says, it's all right, it's okay. There may be turmoil, there may be chaos and conflict all around you, but I have brought my peace into your life, into your soul. Just accept and rest in my peace. Let me ask you, what's what's keeping you from living in God's peace? Are Are there circumstances that you're facing where you just don't know which way to go? You don't know where to go? Remember, you have a wonderful counselor who is there to guide you with miraculous truth. Um, are, Are you dealing with, are you battling habits, maybe an addiction? Are are there conflicts in your life with other people and you just feel overwhelmed, you feel defeated, defeated, there's no way out? You have a mighty God who's willing to fight your battles for you if you'll just trust him and obey him and he'll give you his peace. Are you lonely? Are Are you struggling with or wanting relationships that accept you and care for you and that are real, that will be there for you no matter what? Are you struggling to overcome a hurt with some relationship that's let you down? 
You have an everlasting Father who offers you His comfort, His companionship, and His peace. Because He is the Prince, the ruler of peace. Now maybe, maybe you're wondering what kind of peace this is that God's offering. If the ruler of peace is offering you His peace, what is it? Well, it comes down to this. It literally is peace with God. When we give ourselves over to the Prince of Peace, we're giving in to the peace of God and having peace with God. Romans 5 says this, Therefore, since we have been made right with God, in God's sight by faith, we have a peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of His Son, while we were still sinners, we were enemies with God. We will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends with God. It's Romans chapter 5, focused mainly on verse 10 and 11. You know, it's hard for us to think about the fact that we have been enemies with God. But before you accept his forgiveness and his eternal life, uh, the Bible says we're fighting him. Everything we did was, was simply for ourselves, not for God. It was our will fighting against God's plan. We, we fought until we realized that fighting didn't work. And then we accepted his work in our lives instead of fighting it. We accepted his peace as a result of being saved from the punishment of our sins. And, and even greater, we have a wonderful relationship with God because of what Jesus Christ did through his birth, his life, and his death on the cross, and then his resurrection. Colossians tells us, and God was pleased for him to make peace by sacrificing his blood on the cross so that all beings in heaven and earth would be brought back to God. We have peace with God. But then we are also offered peace from strife. It's not just peace with God, it's, it's peace with the struggles in our life. Before we accepted God's peace, all we could do was fight our urges and hope for the best. But after we receive God's offer of forgiveness and eternal life, he gives us his peace, and the Bible says he fights for us. Romans 8, if our minds are ruled by the Spirit, we will have life and peace for our sinful desires fight against God. See, here's the key. When we turn our desires over to Christ and his control, we're given peace with God. When God's peace comes, becomes the power in our lives, when we let Christ rule our minds, we find life and peace instead of frustration and struggles. Again, Philippians. Then, you will rejoice or experience, excuse me, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. That's God's peace. So how do we accept it? How do we accept God's peace? How exactly are we to allow the ruler of peace to rule our hearts and our minds? We simply have to accept it. We have to accept and receive his peace. See, God won't force his peace on us. He offers us his peace. The coming of Christ at Christmas is all about peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Peace comes from God. The peace of God comes to those who please God by accepting and submitting to his peace. Again, let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. Allow God's peace in you. Allow God to give you his peace. Accept his offer. Put his life in his control. Um, be willing to accept his will, his plans, his guidance for you. Simply come to him, and it's as basic as this. Lord Jesus, here's my life. I submit to your control in, over everything in my life. I accept your offer of forgiveness and eternal peace, eternal life. Now, you may not understand it all, but that's enough to start with. God, here's my life. 
I accept your forgiveness, your eternal life. Give me your peace. That's what it is. Once we receive his peace, God simply says then, live my peace. Stop fighting. Stop attempting to manipulate and control everything in your life. Stop trying to live by your own rules. Accept God's plan and purpose for your life. Peter said it this way in 1 Peter chapter 3, give up your evil ways and do right as you find and follow the road that leads to peace. Paul said in Romans, if our minds are ruled by the Spirit, we will have life and peace. I don't want this to sound vague. I don't want this to be a cliche. Uh, This isn't about living a positive life or blindly going through each day avoiding issues and conflicts that arise. It's literally saying, God, you gave me your peace. Now help me live at peace in this world. God, take over my mind, my thoughts, my will. Help me get rid of the desires and the stuff inside me that are keeping me from living the peaceful life that you planned for me. God, rule my mind and my soul with your presence. It doesn't mean it won't be chaotic around us. It means that God will give us his peace in the midst of the storm. And then as you do that, you can anticipate, you can expect God to bring his peace in your life. Again, Romans chapter 16. But still, I want you to understand what is good and not have anything to do with evil. Then God, who gives peace, will soon crush Satan under your feet. Do you see what that says? God wants to give you peace, and in the process, you're crushing the work of Satan under your feet. You're doing God's will. You're accepting his peace, and Satan, God's using you in the process of destroying the works of Satan in this world. The Prince of Peace is not going to bring peace in your life by using, or the, the Prince of Peace is going to, going to bring peace in your life by using your obedience to trust him and do what's right and in the process crush Satan in his work. God is going to use your obedience and faithfulness to Christ. That's what Christmas is all about. Peace on earth. But even better, there will be peace inside you. The peace that we look for in this life is often easily shattered because it's based on things that don't last. Have you been living your life based on a plan that's falling apart? Christ Jesus is offering you his moment by moment, consistent, eternal, forever peace. Listen to your wonderful counselor. Allow your mighty God and his mighty power to work in your life. Realize that Jesus Christ is everlasting. He's here now. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And because of that promise, you can accept and live in his peace. Allow Jesus Christ, the Christ of Christmas, to have the rule in your heart and your mind, and your life. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for your peace. And as we take time this Christmas Eve or Christmas morning to remember your coming, let us remember that it's not your birthday, it's your coming into this world. You promised to come, you came. You promised to come again. Lord, while we're waiting for your second return, May we live out your peace in our lives. Thank you for being wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen.